Hey folks, it's Glenn TV. We are visiting Mitchell's Folly today in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It's uh, a unique collection. I know I use the word unique so often, but it, it's really a unique town. And, and this is just amazing. I'm at the art gallery part. Um, it's in three different buildings, basically. Uh, amazing. Uh, but uh, yes, this is all Eureka Springs artists here, a collection. And, uh, but he's got tons of stuff from all over the world. Catch you later, Gator. It's Glenn TV from Mitchell's Folly in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It's a beautiful coleus. Hey, Gwen, it's what? What is your official title here? I guess really, or I'm John's monkey. Oh. <laughs> I just try to keep it safe and clean and keep you know the art safe. I'm just a girlfriend, long-suffering girlfriend. Oh, okay. Folks, the original sign, or one of the original signs, I'd say, from the Basin Spring. Gee whiz, I played Alva Jackson one time. Did you really? Yes, I did for Voices from the Silent City. And a oh, couple you of did Silent City? Oh, that yeah, is so cool. I did that. What's the deal with the cloth book? John got it somewhere. I don't know, but it's um, the uh, story of creation of Adam and Eve in oh, French. Wow. And it's a child's book, so it's cloth, so the kid couldn't rip it up. And so it's just charming. There it is, the history of the world. Oh, in wow. images, French images for, um, I can't read French. But there's God and there's Adam and Eve in the garden. Neat. And then it has all the scenes from, there's the story, there's God's created the earth and, you know, the, the French that I can't read. <laughs> But it will have all the different animals and... Oh, look at that. I know. Aren't they wonderful? They are. They're beautiful. The beasts. Isn't that sweet? That is nice. Those are beautiful. They look like Navajo or... <laughs> God, there's treasures every place. Okay, I just asked Gwen about uh, John's fly fishing habits, and uh, I noticed uh, yesterday when I was filming, you know, I asked him if he fly fished, and he gave me kind of a fishy answer, if you ask me. Yeah, <laughs> so I asked Glenn, uh, Gwen. Hey, Gwen, does he, did he go fishing or what? When I met John, he had a house. I looked under the bed. There were 13 tackle boxes. He's obsessive about the gear. 
he used to fish, he used to catch fish. Now, with the Parkinson's, the only way he can fish is if I take him fishing, and I dislike every aspect of fishing. <laughs> I don't want to hook bait it, I don't want to tie knots, I don't want to kill a fish, I don't want to clean a fish, and I don't want to cook a fish. Oh, but, gee. But I'll probably take him fishing. Well, that's good. Well, <laughs> you're, you're a good girlfriend, Gwen. <laughs> Each one has a memory, huh, John? Folks, this is a fireplace. I wonder if it's sandstone or limestone. But there's so much stuff. Maps galore. They are beautiful. Oh, they're from Mexico. That's wild. Look at all of them. That's wild. A big shoe.
never been to Palestine. Gee. Because, you know, Palestine is enough. What you doing, pricing? Yeah. It's the never-ending. Now, y'all do actually sell stuff here. You encourage people to come in and buy something, right? Oh, I pray that they'll buy something. <laughs> I pray that they'll let them. He could make several sales a weekend, but he, <laughs> he doesn't want to let go. And some people understand, and there was one woman that was kind of pissed off. You know, she just didn't get it. And then um, John let her boyfriend buy a, a little fishing lure, and not only did he let him buy it, but he reduced the price to half. And she got kind of flustered, yeah. like, hey, what about me? But whatever, it's his game. I mean, this is America. You can do whatever the heck you want. That's right. Okay. When did this start? When did Mitchell's family start? Oh, um... This is his first antique business that's called Mitchell's Folly. And the reason it's called Mitchell's Folly is he knew he was going to build a building in this garage. This was a garage. And a folly, if you look it up, is a small, fanciful, well, a fanciful building in a garden. So you'll see these big mansions in England that have beautiful gardens and then they'll have a goofy little building. So that it's not the folly of it all. It's the folly is the building. Oh, okay. Right. Huh. The timbers are locally made from, um, oh, in Clifty, there's a sawmill. So uh, the sawmill, um, you know, did the timbers. Uh, the windows, a lot of the windows, the front windows especially, came from his high school in Marianne, Ar uh, Arkansas, uh, the Pertrol. I can't pronounce Virtual High School. Those are Cypress windows. Um, he just owned all these parts. And so the guys, this building was designed on a napkin. You can't do that in Eureka Springs anymore. I don't know how it passed. Julie Kahn Valentine did a painting of what it might look like. You know, it was just kind of casual. And next thing you know, he had a building. That's great. It's kind of like a little bit of a fairy tale. Yeah. It is. And it's wonderful. So you used to get cases of these? We used to get entire one-ton flatbed truckloads. Of oh, God, my God. Thousands of tiles. We sold thousands. Um, you'll see them on the front of the shop, and we still have people asking about them. And now John was telling me something about that, that there's part of the Crescent Hotel. Well, you oh, said yeah. these came from the Crescent. The Crescent Hotel penthouse burned down in the 60s, and these were taken off of the burnt-out... Uh, penthouse and the penthouse has since been rebuilt by um, the Rennicks that bought the Crescent um, I don't know how long ago and own the Crescent now. They've since rebuilt the penthouse. Originally that's where they're from. Well, that's great. That's great. And the other tiles are beautiful. Aren't they cool? They are really neat. We've had to replace the tiles a few times. You know, the wood goes bad or something. So Julie Traxler used to live here in Eureka Springs and she was an artist and very popular local artist and character. And now who was it? Who? Julie Traxler. Oh, okay. And she since passed um, a few years ago, several years ago. And back in the 70s, um, when the local powers that be didn't like the hippies moving to town, it was just like in the 70s they were just wanted them to leave, wanted to get rid of them. There was a whole lot of problems. Anyway, the uh, police shooting range, um, the guys would go out and practice at the shooting range. So Julie took a metal ironing board, and she made several of these and made hippie targets for the police to shoot at. <laughs> oh, so that's gee. a hippie target for the police to shoot oh, at. Oh, gee. I never would have guessed. Never would have guessed a hippie target. Oh, my God. Oh, gee. And actually, if you look at the ironing board, it already has the holes. So maybe that was, you know... That's wild. Arkansas. Let me tell you about these guys. Okay. He's had these forever. He got these early on. And these are, we call them the pool hall girls. He got these from a black pool hall in Helena, Arkansas that doesn't exist anymore. And these were the body women they would have on the wall, you know, back then. Yeah. You know, this was body. And if you look at the picture of beer right there, if you look really close, it has glitter on the beer. So ah. the beer glitters. And John really thinks in the background, that's the levee 
you know, there's a levy in uh, Helena. And he thinks the black and white birds are significant. Huh. I don't, that's John's interpretation, but aren't they the sassiest ladies? They are, they are. <laughs> okay, this thing right above us, it's hard to see because Tim Hilty, way, way back then, they hung it up and we've never taken it down, but there's a goat. You can see the goat horns, oh, you can yeah, see the yeah. fur, you can see the saddle, you can see the stirrups. This is an early Masonic riding goat. And we've had old dudes come in here and say, oh yeah, I remember them talking about riding the goat. They would put the new initiates in their little loincloth and their, you know, regalia, and they would push them around the Masonic Hall on the goat. It was called riding the goat. <laughs> riding the goat. There's little handles on the front. And, uh, That's wild. Some place we have an auction catalog that actually shows another uh, Masonic goat. But, you know, it was homemade. The guys made it, and it was part of their uh, initiation. That's wild. Look at how early this newspaper is. Mm. Bandit foiled. Emerson by Emerson Bennett. And, I don't know, he used to have a trunk that had slaves advertised. I don't know if this is the one, but I don't know if I can find a date. There's a guy hanging. Oh, my God. Look at... Oh, yeah. Yeah, guy being hung. Uh-huh. That's wild. So, most of this stuff does have a story. You know, everything has a story. Oh, yeah. Okay, check this out. It's sideways, but this is the sign that hung over Hark's Grocery Store on Main Street. Oh, okay. Hey, folks, we are upstairs uh, at the art gallery of uh, Mitchell's Folly, and I'm here with Gwen Bennett, and uh, we're going to look at some of the pieces up here. It's a totally different situation than downstairs. Uh, downstairs has its own charm and tons and tons of stuff. This is a bit more organized, but there are treasures all over. What you see mostly on the walls of this building are works by Lewis and Elsie Friend. And they founded the art colony here in Eureka Springs in the 40s. And they had an art school. Um, you might film the brochure, it's next door. And a lot of their friends came to teach and came here to live. Um, Lewis was a WPA artist and uh, Elsie was also a two-dimensional artist. She also did batik and she was famous for her uh, mid-century jewelry. Um, they were both very well-established artists. So if you kind of span around, there's a huge number of paintings. Elsie Friend kind of on this side, Lewis Friend on that side. I've Pretty seen much variations on these all over town. There's a variation, uh, there's one very similar in style at the library to that one. Oh, that's uh, Dale, De Dale De La Cruz. That's uh, Dale's work. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one's Lewis Friend. Um, here, here, maybe if I hold this up, you can see this. Here's a picture of Lewis and Elsie Friend. There's Elsie Friend, there's Lewis Friend. They were a hot couple, and they started the art school here. And John gave a speech when he was in good speech before his Parkinson's uh, at the Shallow Museum. So these storyboards explain the history of the art colony here. Here's some of Elsie's jewelry. And I saw some of Elsie Friend's jewelry at the Victoria and Albert Museum. Oh, gee. And she was known for these jewels. They're called El Ceramics. She would take some uh, ceramic clay, mm -hmm. and then she would put uh, enamel powder over it and make jewels and you know her designs were just incredible so well were, were they alive when did John meet them oh or? yeah John knew them oh okay yeah 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 in fact um, he bought a lot of um, stuff from Lewis and Elsie and uh, got things from them and from their um, estate he knew a lot of the artists you see here um, he knew Glenn Gant he knew Mary McKinney uh, Lewis and Elsie, uh, the Swedlands. Um, he came in time, and John realized that Eureka Springs history needed to be preserved, and he's an art hoarder, so he would buy everything he could lay his hands on. Oh, gee. Did, was he independently wealthy or no, something? No, or? no, he was a waiter. Oh, okay. um, He started out collecting bottles as a young man, and he, what we say, traded up. He just kept trading the bottles for something better, and he was a waiter in Hot Springs in the winter when it was off-season here. He was a waiter in New Orleans at some of the finer restaurants. 
Uh, he was the first waiter to set up the dining room at the Dairy Hollow House. Um, you wouldn't think about him as being an elegant black and white <laughs> waiter, but he pulled it off. He was a fabulous. I waiter. bet he was very dapper in his time. He was. I, I bet he caught your eye. <laughs> so, and he bought and sold old cars. He has a sports car collection. Um, he's just always been busy. That's great. He's left really something great for. Uh, not so much great for you to have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so You're probably things. hoping you go before him, let's face it. Well, I'm hoping he has the joy of rehoming this art. It needs new homes, and, you know, I want him to have the fun of doing that. But Does he, he understands he can't hold on to it forever, I guess. Oh, no. Like, oh, no. no. He, he's not worried. <laughs> he's never worried about anything, let okay. me tell you. He just... He just goes forward. Well, that's great. That's, that's a good attitude, really. Yeah. This is um, from the Harps Grocery Store. We saw the sign in the other building, and this sat in front of their store for years. This pottery is um, Margaret Paschal. Margaret Paschal was, well, not the dinosaur. <laughs> but, okay, the pottery is Margaret Paschal. She was a mid-century potter. And you can see that she was influenced by George Orr. You know, a lot of the mid-century weed pots, remember back in the 70s and 60s, weed pots. So she was doing mid-century pottery, and she was a, a student of a famous potter at the South Dakota School of Mines. Um, well, this um, clay piece, and you'll see other things I have elsewhere. Uh, Emmett Sullivan was one of the uh, sculptors for uh, the Dinosaur Park, which stood outside of town. It was before your time. It had sculptures of dinosaurs. You know the dinosaur you see on Spring Street in front of Mr. Farwell's building? Oh, yeah, yeah. The Tyrannosaurus? Well, that was one from Dinosaur Park. Oh, and they had okay. a giant... I Google. wondered where that came from and what yeah. the story so was So Emmett Sullivan was a sculptor. He worked on um, Mount Rushmore. He didn't design it, but worked on it. And then I think he worked on the Christ of the Ozarks. We have a maquette of the Christ of the Ozarks here somewhere. This is another Julie Traxler. You saw the Julie Traxler um, hippie target. Uh, there's a nude of Elsie, his wife. Louis friend painted that nude of Elsie. There's scenes of Eureka Springs. Louis painted those scenes. And so you can get a good view. You can pretty much tell where you are. Main Street. It's a beautiful nude. So much stuff. I know. Well, now, what differentiates what you have in here from what you have down there? Or is it just different collections? Um, we tried to keep the Eureka collection up here. This is Eureka art. Um, most everything. Like Julie Con Valentine, she's still living. She lives here in town. These are early Julies. This is Helen DeLue. Um, let me pick her up. Helen DeLue did pictures of, um, I might have this upside down, no, no, Delu. here's her signature. She did um, animals and plants, and she was kind of an untrained artist, but she was a notable artist in town. You know, the people collected, she painted for the tourists. Um, who else? This is Julie Traxler, Julie Traxler. What's the, what's the deal with the, yes, uh, is it rake? It's a rake chair. It's and, a rake chair. Right, and Julie Traxler did this. She was also a welder, and the name of this piece is Set Down and Stay a Spell. <laughs> John calls it the mother-in-law chair. <laughs> and in this room, Eureka Artist, these are all Glenn Gant. Um, we knew Glenn Gant. He used to walk by every day on his way to, let's see, he did a lot of news. Let me find a Glenn. Let me find a Glenn that I really like. Nope, that's somebody else. Jen mixes up our artists. What's cool about Glenn Gant is he was um, trained at the uh, 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 Chicago Art Institute. Some of his pieces, he will do pictures of cafes full of our local hippie friends and we could recognize people. So you get to see what people look like 30, 40 years ago. Oh, okay. Fun. So he has Glenn Gant. Um, if you look over here, these are portraits of Lewis and Elsie's friend. 
Oh, Lewis Payne, I wondered who that was. When he got out of the military in the 40s, that's about the time these were painted. That's he and his wife. Nice um, couple. Mary McKinney was a mid-century artist. Um, this is a war piece from the Spanish War, Spanish-American War. Um, she was a mid-century artist. We have a lot of her work. She's a very collectible mid-century artist. Uh, who else is in here? Oh, even the circus poster. Check out, uh, we have a uh, few of the circus posters. If you'll look at the bottom, it says Neil Walters Poster Corporation, Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The Neil done. Walters Company uh, was here in Eureka Springs until about the late 50s, 60s when they went to Bentonville to become Walmart's poster printers in the early Walmart days. And you never see Walmart posters like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is local. This is um, a folk art from uh, Clifty, Arkansas. And there was a grocery store. It was Arthur Bennett's store. But what I love about folk art is, check out the spelling. Headed, H-E-D-D-E-D, -E -D -E -D, for <laughs> Arthur Bennett's grocery <laughs> I was educated in New Orleans. What's wrong with that? Uh, <laughs> no, no, and there's a love of birds, I notice. I notice uh, a lot of bird uh, shots and he, stuffed animals and he stuff. He got a collection of uh, bad taxidermy from the Subiaco Academy when they kind of downsized their museum. So um, when technically you're not supposed to sell native birds, but these are old enough. We actually could, but he likes keeping them. Yes, I've got birds at home that will be angry with me for spending so much time away today. Uh, they are beautiful. That's a Julie Traxler. Oh, really? Yeah. Text star potatoes. Let's see. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> That's wild. And all the rugs. Yeah. We got rugs, rugs, rugs. Every place you go, there's rugs in here. And then there's a bunch of them wound up. Yeah. I get wound up sometimes too if I drink too much coffee. But yeah, they've got. What's the deal with the rugs? It's just one of the things he collects. If he finds one that he likes the price in the rug, he buys it. These are all Lewis Friend portraits. He's got a very unique style visually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes you wonder about. It. it seems like I've seen this person before. You know, it looked familiar to me too, but I have no idea. This has been wonderful. And I hear that this is Lot's wife over here. That's a Lewis friend, and yes, he did a religious series, and that is Lot's wife, turning to a pillar of salt. This is called the Prospector, and it's just a little thing that you could put now your who keys did it? in. Emmett Sullivan, uh, I told you, he did the little dinosaur. I oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He worked on the Christ that's of right. the Ozarks, and he worked on, I oh, okay. think, Mount Rushmore. So see, this is Eureka art. Right. And now who is this? This is Glenn Gant? Yeah, this is Glenn Gant, and he was a um, Chicago Art Institute trained artist. He was really good, and we knew him. Um, he used to walk by the shop every day in his Birkenstocks. He could barely see, and he'd go to the Oasis, our local restaurant, for lunch. And he painted some of the early scenes of the art schools here in Eureka Springs. Um, you can see there's an artist drawing a picture, and you can see a subject sitting there. This guy looks like he's carving or doing something with tools. Um, hippies, beards, hair. And so a lot of the scenes he kind of preserved locals. Um, his work, Glenn Gant's work, Julie Kahn's work, a lot of these artists' work are in homes all over town. The friends, everybody. People collect these here in Eureka Springs.
Hey folks, we're here at Mitchell's Folly in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, John and Gwen Bennett have just been uh, wonderful, wonderful. John Mitchell and Gwen Bennett. And um, gee, there's so much to see, so much to film. I didn't even get a small percentage of it. You need to come by and see what I missed, okay, because there's a bunch of it here. Catch you later, Gator. Glenn TV, commercial free from Mitchell's Folly.